Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 and a new experiment today where we're taking a look at what would happen if every team in the Premier League was under a transfer embargo. Now if you have a look here you can see they're under transfer embargo Arsenal until 2049. That goes for every single team in the Premier League. It even includes Chelsea. Their transfer embargo uh, goes to a slightly different date. It was a bit weird trying to get the transfer embargo extended for Chelsea because they kept appealing it. Uh, successfully but I managed to make it work by changing the date a little bit you can see Palace every single one of the Premier League teams under transfer embargo but it's not only the Premier League teams that are under embargo if we have a look at La Liga the biggest teams around Europe are also now placed under transfer embargo so you can see while Barcelona are Getafe are not um, but if we go through to Real Madrid, you can see they are under embargo. Uh, Atletico Madrid are under embargo. Sevilla and Valencia are also under embargo because what I did was sort every team in Europe by uh, reputation and those with the highest reputation who can attract the best quality transfers all had their uh, transfer embargo placed on them. So that goes for... The Italian league, if we have a look with Inter to begin with, you can see they're under embargo. Lazio are, uh, Lecce aren't, but AC Milan are, Napoli are, um, Parma not, Roma yes, and Juventus obviously also under embargo. So this has happened in pretty much every league. Uh, all of the big teams you would expect are now under embargo. So Brescia, Dortmund, um, Bayern Munich are as well. Uh, in League U, uh, you've got... Monaco and I think Lyon are also under embargo alongside PSG. Yep, Lyon also put under there and a few of the other big teams. So Porto, for instance, uh, also under transfer embargo, as are Benfica. And I think Celtic are also under embargo. So it's, it's quite a lot of teams. The idea is I haven't tried to punish every big team that you might have heard of in Europe. Instead, we're just trying to get the usual suspects to stop winning the Champions League. That is the goal here. Um, and we also want to see if these big teams fall out of the floor um, of their own domestic football. So in the Premier League, for instance, we want to see if all of these teams can get relegated eventually before their embargo comes to an end. And then we want to see if they can come back up the leagues and recover their position. So what we'll do today is probably go about 10 years in the future, I think, today. Then we'll go 20 years next time, right up to the end of the embargo. And then we will go uh, probably another 20 years ahead to see if the big teams can come back after the transfer embargo is listed. Or if the new dominance will set the pace for uh, European and world football. So... In the Premier League, it is going to be interesting because every single team has been put under embargo. That's because the Premier League has the disproportionate amount of income for even the teams that usually get relegated. They have such a high income stream from their shared TV revenue that they always do really well. So we want to see how that all does work out. But we'll keep an eye on the Champions League. And the other thing we want to look out on is how the England team do now that the Every team in the Premier League should be playing their own players. It should really help the English players coming through the Youth Academy and everything else to succeed and do very well. So we'll keep an eye on that. But do drop a like on the video down below if you're excited for this three-part experiment. Make sure to subscribe for the second and third part, which will be out. Um, this experiment does take a long time to load because of the number of leagues I've got in. So I can't guarantee it will be up uh, tomorrow and then the day after. It might be a little break in there somewhere. Uh, so maybe tomorrow might be the longest jump forward. So uh, it might be a gap between videos, but there will be a new video out in a day or two. So make sure to subscribe for that. And let's jump forward 10 years into the future and see how this league table is looking. Well, we are going to start out with the transfers now that we're 10 years ahead. You can see in the Premier League here, uh, very little money spent. A few existing transfers being executed 5th of July 2019 here for Pablo Hernandez from Leeds to Sheffield United. But otherwise, it's mostly players leaving the following year. A little bit more money changing hands. Again, pre-existing transfers can go through. So you can see Spurs and Fulham carrying out deals. But then it's West Brom and Leeds pulling up the next positions. Fulham in there as well. Leeds amongst the other teams. Uh, the transfer fees start to go a bit bigger with some of the championship clubs coming up, taking the headline position. But what is interesting is that the big teams are all hanging on to their players. There's nobody being sold. 
which I believe is a little bit different to previous years where you have seen those big teams lose those players, whereas now they all seem to be staying there pretty much until either their contract ends or they retire. Uh, there is very little else happening, although why Sheffield United are signing players, I don't fully understand. They should also be under embargo. Um, but you can see China here signing players, Eintracht Frankfurt managing to pick up some players, but otherwise it's West Brom, Leeds, some of those promoted teams you'd expect to see. Uh, making the most substantial transfers. Birmingham spending £65 million on a player from Lyon uh, in the most recent season. So if we have a look at this league table, beginning with the first year, you can see Manchester City won the league. There are no surprises here. I mean, maybe Leicester getting relegated is a big surprise. Very tight at the bottom. That would have been a very interesting final day. Any of the bottom six, I think, could have gone down at that point. Maybe not Burnley. Bottom five at least, though. And Leicester and Palace both getting relegated is quite a big shock to have taken place but the rest of the league looking pretty uh, standard the following year though Liverpool were the team to come and take the title seven points clear of City uh, but again it's a pretty standard league table West Ham and Villa both going down Leeds and West Brom doing really well Fulham going straight back down though and the following year again Liverpool champions two points ahead of City and Spurs and Arsenal uh, only four points off the title as well. Chelsea and United rounding out the top six. Leicester back in the Premier League uh, as are Crystal Palace. And it's Birmingham, West Brom and Norwich that go down. So the newly promoted teams who are not under embargo are the teams getting relegated. Now the following year City come to take another title. But the top six has not changed. Bournemouth and Leicester starting to encroach a little bit. But Palace go down, Villa go down, Derby go down. It's just very surprising that nothing has changed even at this point. Man City very tight at the top here. Uh, 79, 78, 76, 75. But it's still the same six teams at the top. Leicester have been relegated, come back and are a little bit closer to the top. Newcastle go down bottom of the league. Birmingham go down as well. Uh, next season, top six the same. 96 points for City. It's barely touching them at this point as they take yet another title but Leeds now getting a little bit close to the top with 52 points uh, but no real surprises City taking another title three points clear of United this time West Brom only two points from cracking this top six now and they're all under embargo that's a crazy thing you know they are because the number of defeats are racking up uh, and the winning points total much lower than it usually would be and the following year City with yet another title but Everton and Leeds both break into the top six this year as Arsenal and especially Liverpool drop down. Liverpool in eighth place. Finally, we're seeing an impact with some of these other teams like Leeds coming up the table. And finally, we see Leeds make it into the top four as City take yet another title. Uh, four points clear of Chelsea United doing well as well. Uh, no surprise to see Chelsea and United having a bit of longevity because they are teams that are playing a lot of young players. City have a lot of very gifted young players on their books. But Liverpool dropped down to 8th place uh, and Spurs now in 6th as well. Only Leeds breaking into that top 6. And in the most recent season, Arsenal have come from nowhere to take the title. Leeds hang on to their 4th place position. Derby County now in 6th. Uh, and you can see towards the bottom, Liverpool now dropped down to 13th. They are in some trouble of potentially getting relegated Spurs in 11th. But it's interesting that these teams have managed to hang on at the top. You can see if we look at them sorted by value, Trent Alexander-Arnold, no surprise that he's at the top. Curtis Jones, these are players we're seeing play quite regularly for them. But the value begins to drop out of their team. It's not a very big squad. They've got players worth 6.5k, uh, making seven substitute appearances. Uh, players worth not a lot of money. Sean Robson, for instance, obviously a regen, come through, are doing well for them in terms of playing games. But uh, if we look at their, I mean, their manager is Kieran McKenna. I don't know where he's come from. It looks a bit like Gavin Williamson, the uh, old defence secretary. I don't know where his place in the cabinet position is now, but that's a weird little reference. Um, Arsenal, though, won the Premier League. If we look at their squad, uh, Saka doing brilliantly worth 72 million. And Nikita, 66. A lot of top quality players in here. Obviously, their youth academy is really going to benefit them. But a few English players coming through worth a bit of money. John Robinson here and Peter Gallagher, both worth a, uh, worth a lot of money. Joe Willock, worth 60 million as well. Uh, Jack Arrowsmith, another English player worth a lot of money. That's what's done it for Arsenal, is bringing through these young players and developing them. Obviously, they had the likes of Nicolas Pepe in there too. Um, 
and Arsenal have come to win a title out pretty much nowhere. But Man City, if we look at their team, they still have Pep Guardiola in charge after all this time. Uh, and looking at their senior squad, you can see there's a few players worth a lot of money. But maybe you could see why Arsenal managed to take the latest title and not City. The likes of Phil Foden, um, not quite enough to carry them through. Morgan Rogers doing very well for them. Claudio Gomez um, in there as well, the centre-back. But they are, after that, starting to lose a few players. Quite a lot of them in their late 30s at this point. Sane, Sterling, Silva, Laporte and Stones will all be leaving soon. And that will leave a massive hole in Pep Guardiola's uh, 10-year side there. Leeds United, though, should really be building an absolute empire at this point. You can see they've got a lot of players worth a lot of money. They should be cleaning up this league title from now on. Um, they've had a little bit of a slow journey to the top of the Premier League, but they are beginning to get there a little bit. Uh, Chelsea in fifth, Derby in sixth. And a few other teams have been relegated down. If we have a look um, at the league table in the Championship, um, who have we got down here? Newcastle down here, Villa down here, Norwich also down there. But we are missing a couple of teams, I think. So some of them may have been relegated even further. If we look in League One, do we have a Premier League team down here? We've got Burnley down in League One, mid-table in League One. They are not doing too well. And in League Two, perhaps, Crystal Palace just been promoted back out of League Two. Uh, obviously, they were one of the first teams to get relegated. And they seem to have really struggled. Look, they managed to come back one season. But since then, they had three relegations in four years. Um, and they've managed to get back up into League One with Simon Grayson in charge. But looking at their senior squad, there's not a lot of top quality players in there. And that's the trouble. When they get relegated, their good players get taken and it leaves them with even more uh, young players having to step into the breach. So they've done really well to get promoted, bearing in mind all of that. Uh, we will just drop down to the Vanarama National League, although it's not loaded. Why is that not loaded? We'll have to load that up for the next part. Um but at the moment, I think Palace have fallen further than anybody. So we will load up those leagues ahead of the next part. You will be able to see the Vanarama National League and everywhere else. Um, we do just want to have a look at the FA Cup if we can. Um, pretty sure if we drop down here enough, we will see the FA Cup. And looking at the past winners here, Bournemouth beating Sheffield United, Man United leads, Brighton Spurs, Chelsea Liverpool Arsenal. Uh, City after three in a row, giving way to a nice rotation of teams, the likes of Birmingham and Sheffield United appearing in there. And for the Carabao Cup, Leeds, Chelsea, again, it's a really nice diversity of teams winning it. They are still largely the big teams in the Carabao Cup, but in the FA Cup at least, we have seen some of that variation begin to appear. Now, if we go to La Liga and have a look at what's been happening here, Obviously, only the big teams put under embargo here, so it might take a little while for them to be dislodged. Real Madrid taking the top one, the usual top three, with a big gap to fourth place. Valencia and Sevilla also under embargo. They will begin to drop off the radar a bit. Barcelona taking another title. Real Madrid, Villarreal in third as Barcelona dropped down to fourth before coming back to take the title with Real Madrid in fourth. And then Atletico Madrid... And let's take two in a row. Real Madrid get one. Barcelona now in sixth place, falling down the table. Atletico Madrid with another one. Where were Real Madrid that year? They were in sixth. So a little bit of variation. And finally, Villarreal come and take one of the titles with 94 points. A huge gap over Barcelona. Real Madrid down in sixth place. And Sevilla getting relegated. So we're beginning to see uh, some of those teams drop down in Liga. Uh, oh, you can see there's already a really nice spread of finishes here with the first season PSG at the top Monaco are probably really going to struggle with this Lyon managed to get second but then the very next season Lille came to take the title ahead of PSG Monaco in fifth Lyon managed to get a title the next year um, before PSG took one and then Lille got another one uh, where are Monaco at this point they're in fourth Lyon in third so the, the three embargo teams still doing pretty well as PSG get a title, Marseille get a title, PSG down in eighth, Monaco in ninth, Lyon in third, then Lille take it, PSG in seventh, then Nantes take it with PSG in eighth. They're really going to start to struggle now. That is kind of compounding for them as Nantes take another title. Um, and that brings us up to the most recent time. But Nantes seem to be establishing a little bit of dominance at the top of that league. Looking at Serie A, well, we can see the dominant team out here are Juventus took the first title but then Napoli came uh, Juventus again took a couple in a row Fiorentina got one and then they started now Inter 
randomly chosen over their rivals uh, because they both had exactly the same record, but it's not a great place to be finishing. Fiorentina, though, with that stranglehold on the league and in the most recent season, Juventus now down in eighth place as Fiorentina one defeat, nearly going unbeaten, nearly getting 100 points, but taking the title by 24 points over Cagliari. Uh, Bologna in third, and all the other big teams starting to drop a little bit down the table. We will still see them begin to disappear. And as you can see in the Bundesliga as well, much bigger impact here than we saw in the Premier League. Uh, Bayern Munich quite quickly falling off the top after being reasonably far ahead to begin with. Russia Dortmund straight away dropping down the league. They're now in 12th at this point as Wolfsburg take their first title over Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich do come back, um, but Wolfsburg take the very next year. Bayer Leverkusen relegated. They are one of the teams under embargo. And then Bayern Munich got relegated out of nowhere. I mean, they finished, you know, they won the title the next year. They finished fifth, then seventh, then relegated out of absolutely nothing. Just gone one point away from safety as Wolfsburg take a title. Um, imagine that a Bundesliga season without Bayern Munich. Uh, I assume they come back. They do. They finish 13th as Wolfsburg get another title. And that was the most recent season. So Bayern Munich have managed to come back. But they are the first major, major team to get relegated. If we have a quick look at Liga Nars, there's no surprises here, even though the embargo has happened. Uh, it's the same three teams winning the league year after year after year. So that is the major leagues. The next thing to take a look at is the Champions League. And if we have a look maybe at the quarterfinals of this competition onwards each year, um, in the first season there are no surprises here so we won't look at the winners we'll do that afterwards uh, until we see some surprising results Benfica getting through to the semis with City, Liverpool, Borussia Dortmund not a surprise um, Valencia making the semis but it's another team that's under embargo finally we see Fiorentina break through um, that season the following year same old teams the next year same old teams Premier League especially doing well here uh, then we see Wolfsburg manage to make it through in the semis uh, it's Benfica who make a final, and in the final, Man City take a Champions League. The following year, Marseille and Fiorentina both make the semis. In the semis, it's Fiorentina and United who go through, but Man United take the title that year. Here we go. This is a nice big change. So we've got Lazio, Wolfsburg, Borussia Mönchengladbach, Lille, Nantes and Fiorentina all through to the quarterfinals. Uh, it's United and Wolfsburg in the final, and it's United who take another Champions League title. And in the most recent season, we do have Leeds in the quarterfinals. Lazio in there, Lille, Fiorentina, Wolfsburg. Um, and in the semis, Barcelona and Fiorentina. And in the final, it's Barcelona who take it. So looking at the past winners here, not a great deal of surprises. Now, Fiorentina did win it in 22-23, and they've since had two final appearances. But otherwise, it's the Manchester teams so that have totally dominated uh, the Champions League, and I did I did not expect this uh, to happen. Ten years on, and these teams are still dominant. They've had not had a lot of money leave the club. They've done very well in hanging on to their players. Um, but they're so old now. Old now. Um, I mean, how have they still got Pep Guardiola in charge? If you look at their competition history here, they've now got four Champions League titles, 13 Premier League titles, a FIFA Club World Cup, Cup Winners' Cup from 1970, four Super Cups, eight FA Cups, uh, nine Carabao Cups. They've continued to just collect trophies. It's barely impacted them whatsoever. Now, dropping down to the Europa League, looking at the past winners here, a little bit more variability, but not too much. You can see Bologna making a final, a Real Sociedad Marseille final, Sampdoria Villarreal won. Uh, no English surprises in here. Spurs beating Fenerbahce. But the English team's picking up quite a few Europa Leagues. I think we'll see that happen an awful lot from now on. Um, but I'm just really surprised that teams like Manchester United um, still doing really well. £95 million Jimmy Burgess, a little regen up front for them. who seems a bit like a gold machine. But there's a lot of good English players. We will be looking at that next. Uh, this Mejbri guy who is French. I assume he's a regen. No signed, actually, in real life from AS Monaco and become an absolute wonder kid. Robbie Ross in there as well. He is a regen striker. So they've still got a decent team. The likes of Mason Greenwood, Marcus Rashford, still only in their late 20s, early 30s. Twan Zebe, uh, they're always going to do well. Wamba Saka down there, not worth a lot of money now at 31 years old. He seems to have aged pretty quickly. 
uh, in terms of his value. Scott McTominay also fallen through the floor at 32. He's worth only 525k. I don't know why that would be. Maybe because his contract is ending. Um, I don't know why they'd let him go when they're under a transfer embargo, but maybe they are letting him go. Uh, so very interesting that these teams have managed to continue to doing what they're doing. They've still got David De Gea and goal, Man United. Uh, but if we do have a look at the uh, England team, they're the team that we really want to have a look at and see if they've managed to benefit. Um, they have got a different manager to Gareth Southgate in charge. You can see the European Championships didn't go well, beaten by Portugal, but a very good World Cup qualifying campaign. Uh, Nations League campaign went well, uh, but knocked out by Ireland. Oh, that's a killer. Uh, the next year, crushed in the Nations League knockouts, but then they do go on and win a European Championship um, out of nowhere, really. 3-2 win over Sweden. You can see these, te these names that we've seen pop up quite a lot. Uh, beat Hungary in the semi-final and a 4-0 win over Scotland in the final. Why is Scotland in the final of this competition? But a 4-0 crushing of the old enemy. Um, the following year, excellent record. Uh, World Cup doesn't go well losing to Wales. I don't know why they keep losing to home nations here in the British nations or from the British Isles. Um, following season, another really good qualification. Go out in the quarterfinals to France after beating Wales and Scotland along the way. Um, and then Nations League lose on Germany on penalties in the final. Uh, not ideal. And that takes us to the most recent time. But it looks like England doing well. They're up in third in the world rankings. France are up there at the top. Italy and Spain doing well. Germany, all the teams under embargo, doing very well out of this. Portugal as well at the top there. They've got a few under embargo. Brazil and Argentina around where you would expect them to be. Uh, but just having a look at the uh, World Cup... Uh, and see who's managed to win this recently. Spain and France won the last two. So the embargo teams do seem to be putting up a good fight. Maybe that's something to do with the players coming through. If we look at the senior squad for England, not the schedule, the national team senior squad, and sort them by value, there are a lot of players worth a lot of money. I mean, Jimmy Burgess has a potential ability of 195. He's a genuine wonder kid who's come through the United Academy, um, and he is absolutely fantastic he's going to be an absolute legend for club and country i have no doubt about that robbie ross also up there 167 for him but lots of players worth over 50 million in the team it's a very strong starting 11 with good distribution across the positions as well they're not all concentrated harry kane now playing out on the left flank still at spurs at 35 years old still playing for england uh, quite a few older english players in here but a good overall picture for the future of English football I mean these potential abilities are crazy 195 185 180 uh, although one of them is Harry Kane John Robinson the centre-back from Arsenal up there with a high potential as well but it's been a, a weird start to this one I have to say going back to the Premier League and looking at the way this table finished Lee's finally breaking in there they're 12 points off Arsenal at the top we can see the likes of Liverpool dropping down, Leicester are dropping down. Some of the Premier League teams will begin to drop out. We've got 20 more years of embargo. Uh, so I think we're about two, three years away from these teams really plummeting down the table uh, because they can't refresh their teams whatsoever. They've just been very lucky with regens and hanging on to their players so far. Uh, just looking at the top goal scorers over the last few years, if we can. Go to maybe player stats. No, that's not really helping. We want the awards, award winners. There we go, and if we go to top goal scorer for the different years, uh, you can see the kind of players we've got here. So early on, Sergio Aguero, then Harry Kane came in, then you had Callum Wilson, then Robbie Ross bursts onto the scene ahead of Wilson and Ian Acho. Uh, Florian Andone actually got top scorer, but only with 17. Sterling, Eli Ewan, and then Troy Parrott getting in there, ahead of Joe Linton and Morgan Rogers. And then we start to see uh, Jimmy Burgess in particular appearing at the top here. Um, he's been in the last three years in the top three without actually winning it. And this Valter Gaspar guy from Portugal took the most recent one. But that is probably going to be it for this part of this experiment. Next time we will go 20 years into the future, right to the end of the embargo, to see what has happened 
in the Premier League overall. Um, and then in the final part, we'll probably go another 20, 30 years ahead to see what the new status quo is following the end of the embargo. And if these big teams can come back up after they have hopefully dropped quite far down, because 10 years on, they have not dropped at all and City have kept on winning titles. So do drop a like down below if you've enjoyed this experiment. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. But until next time, see ya.